So this is the Playdate. It's a handheld console that you can make games for. For the last nine months, I've been messing around making tutorials and games for the device, but recently, I've been sort of burnt out. I post videos pretty much every week, so it's been about nine months of almost weekly uploads. About a week ago, I was scrolling on itch.io, as I do, and I came across this game jam game called Black. It's like a tennis game, but not really. But whatever it is, you gotta admit, this is pretty amazing. I mean, look at the legs. I couldn't help but feel inspired. I was thinking, hey, I'm kind of in a creative rut right now. I should make a quirky tennis game for the play date. It'll be a good time. One small issue though, my honeymoon is literally in a few days from me posting this video. So I only had about a week to make the game. I could probably do it, right? First challenge is, of course, with any Playdate game, where to even start? Because there's no graphical game engine for the Playdate. It's all just code. No dropping assets into a scene to see what's going on. So I decided to simplify things a bit. My plan was to basically make Pong, but you would have a racket swing at the ball. I thought it would be cool to copy this 3D ball effect from Thwack, but it seemed like it would be hard to figure out, so I didn't even try. Art's not my strong suit, so I went looking for some assets to use for the player character, and that's when I came across Tim. He was basically calling out to me, so I created a little mock-up. You can see here that I started thinking about a heart system and a power system, as I wanted it so instead of trying to score points, you try to take down the opponent's health, and you move on to the next opponent in sort of a gauntlet style. I wanted to implement some special abilities too, but I wasn't sure if I had enough time to add it. You have to keep watching to see what ends up happening. My first coding task was to make a character controller. I thought a state machine would be a good fit for this, but since there's no visual state machine controller like in Unity or Unreal Engine, it would have to be in code. Luckily, someone made a great state machine library for the playdate, so I can easily take a sprite sheet and turn it into a state machine with just a few lines of code. After setting up the movement logic, I got the player animated and moving around. There's a little bit of acceleration and friction to make the movement feel smooth, but the turns weren't feeling really snappy, so I switched up the code a bit to get the player feeling more responsive. Of course, the best part of making games for the Playdate is actually getting it on the device. So this is the first look at the game when it's on the Playdate. It was looking and feeling pretty clean, so I moved on to the next task. Next step was to make a racket. I wanted to just take the sprite of the racket and rotate it quickly to create a swinging effect. And normally you can just do that in code, but with the Playdate, there's a small issue. Let's take a moment to talk about performance. The Playdate has a decent CPU that runs at 168 MHz. Of course, compared to a computer, that's pretty slow. For example, this Ryzen 5 CPU runs at 3.6 GHz, which is about 20 times faster. However, compared to older handhelds, it's pretty good. For example, the DS CPU runs at 67 MHz, so the Playdate is about 2.5 times faster. The problem is that the Playdate has no GPU, while something like the DS has its own dedicated graphics processing unit. So, while you're not bottlenecked on code performance, you're severely bottlenecked in terms of graphics performance. Of course, you can still do some pretty incredible stuff, like this crazy isometric level builder someone made. But that requires a lot of custom optimizations, which I'm not really smart enough to figure out. So I'm just gonna go full monkey mode and pre-render everything into images. Fortunately, I recently got these suite of tools called JuiceFX and PixelFX Designer that allows you to create animations, like this racket swinging, and export it into a giant sprite sheet. Here's what that ended up looking like on the playdate. I just flipped the racket in the direction you're moving and had it swing when you press the A button. It was feeling exactly like I wanted it to, but at this point, I really wanted to hit something, so I got started on adding a ball. There's a really simple collision library built into the playdate SDK, so I just leveraged that to add some walls to the perimeter of the screen and made this simple bouncing ball. I can't quite hit the ball yet though, since there's no hitbox on the racket. Adding that wasn't too bad though. I just created a giant hitbox on the frame that the racket is swinging. But if you notice, it's getting hit at a different angle each time. I calculate this by doing some basic trigonometry. By calculating the distance to the ball from the player and the horizontal distance, I can get the cosine of this angle. If you remember Sokotoa from your math class, this is the adjacent over hypotenuse part. I can get the sine of the angle easily as well, and I can use those values as a unit vector and multiply it by some base velocity to get which direction the ball should go. I never thought I would use this crap again, but it turns out to be pretty useful. Stay in school, kids. I then added in the walls I made in the mockup so I can eventually fit the UI on the sides. It was already feeling really fun just hitting the ball around, so I felt like I was on the right track. From playtesting, I found this cool emergent property of changing the angle based on how you hit the ball. 
You can set yourself up by hitting the ball horizontally towards the wall, and then quickly hit it again at another angle. I liked it a lot since it added some skill expression to the game, so I kept it in. I also found that you can accidentally soft lock yourself if you hit it perfectly horizontal, so I had to fix that. At this point, the net was just this random dotted line, which I felt was kind of lame, so I was trying to think of what to do with it. Previously, I made a fishing game for the playdate and had a simple fluid simulation with the water. And I thought it would be pretty cool if I had that as a net and made it so when the ball passes through, it would cause some ripples. The performance for the fluid sim in the fishing game wasn't very good, but I found this playdate specific library for it which has much better performance, so I put it into the game. It looked really cool on device, so I was glad I took the time to add a little bit of polish. However, I was getting really tired of hitting the ball by myself, so it was time to add a computer enemy. First step was to create a flipped version of the character to use as a base for the opponent. I had to change a bit of code to get it working, but the collisions and animations were all working great. So I tried adding both the player and the flip version into the game. I tested it out first with the player controlling both characters at once, with the A button swinging the racket for the player, and the B button swinging the racket for the flip player. I realized though that the player model being flipped looked kinda silly, so I flipped it back and it looked way more natural. I was just playing against myself, but for some reason I found myself playing for a while since it felt really fun just passing the ball back and forth. It was like the handheld console equivalent of throwing a tennis ball against the wall. But, of course, it would be way more fun with the enemy AI. At this point, I wasn't quite sure how to do it, but I realized that since the game is pretty similar to Pong, I can use a simple Pong-like AI, where the opponent would just simply follow the position of the ball and swing at it when it got close enough. I was a bit skeptical that this behavior would be complex enough for the game to feel interesting, but turns out it was pretty challenging and fun. The AI would also sometimes set itself up as a result of how it hit the ball. At this point, there's still no scoring yet though, so I removed the walls at the end of the court and made it so the ball would disappear and respawn if it passed the edge. The scoring didn't feel very satisfying, so I felt like it needed some juice. First step was to add some screen shake, which went a long way to making things feel better. I still thought something was missing though, so I pre-rendered some explosion particles in Pixel FX Designer and added those in at the position that the ball was scored. Here's what that looks like on device, which I thought looked pretty clean. If you remember, I mentioned previously that I wanted scoring to work on a heart system, so I went back to the code and added that in. When you score, it takes half a heart off of the opponent. It was starting to feel like an actual game at this point, but it was still missing some progression. I had this idea to add a bunch of different enemies to face in the game, so for that, I needed some different character art. I ended up just basically adding different things to the heads of the player model. So we got a full cast of characters like Tall Hat Tim, Mark Zuckerberg, Brisket and some ribs, Milk, and college roommate. Um, Fulcrum, come in. Yo, yo, gang. I wanted to make a cool entrance animation, something like how Smash Bros does it, where it shows that character portraits animating in. But before I did that, I decided to quickly put together a title screen. I ended up calling the game Almost Tennis. Since the game is almost like tennis, I then spent a lot of time tweaking and putting together this entrance animation for when you go into the game. I was really happy with the result because it looks super polished. It looks great on device as well. You might also notice that I added a scene manager and scene transition as well, which I used to switch between the title scene and the game scene. Currently though, when you die or the opponent runs out of health, the game crashes, so I need to fix that. The Tim asset pack came with the death animation, so I added that into the game. And you can see that when someone runs out of health, they disappear in a puff of smoke. Next, I added so when you lose, a sash with the text defeat appears and you go back to the home screen. Next was to make it so when you win, you move on to the next opponent. There's a total of 10 enemies that you have to defeat one by one. At this point, all the enemies have the same stats, so I created a difficulty scaling system. You can see that for the first opponent, Bubble Boy, he moves way slower, has less health, and his hits are weaker. Compare this to the final opponent, King Bob, who has way more health, moves faster, and hits way stronger. To wrap the game loop up, I created this victory screen with some fireworks in the back to show that you're the almost tennis champion. For my playtesting though, there's still one thing that was bothering me, which was the ball would spawn in randomly and it was kind of jarring. In response, I added in this ball spawning animation that made it seem like it was being formed by particles. With that out of the way, I was 5 days into the project and I thought that I could maybe have time to give the player some abilities. It also seemed unfair that the opponents had cool skins, but the player didn't, so I created a knight character and a chef character. I created the character selection screen so you can pick which character to play. The knight and chef are locked at the start and the knight is unlocked when you beat the game with the contender, and the chef is unlocked when you beat the game with the knight. I tweaked the stats a bit so the knight is slower but with a more powerful swing, and the chef is faster but has less health. 
After thinking about the progression for a bit, I decided to make it so the health rolls over from match to match, in sort of a roguelike fashion, but you heal one heart in between each match. I haven't implemented the abilities yet though, so the first step was to make some sort of bar to keep track of if your ability has charged or not. I mean, so every time you hit the ball, it charges up the meter a bit, and once it's full, there's this sort of wavy animation to show that it's fully charged. Then when you press B, it expends the charge and activates the ability. I was really crunching hard at this point and slowly losing my sanity, but the end was in sight. It was now Friday evening, and I still haven't added the abilities or sound effects, and I basically only had one day left to finish everything since I needed Sunday to make this video. But I trusted that I could finish everything on Saturday. Saturday morning, I woke up and got to work adding the first ability, which was a simple dash for the default character. You simply dash in the direction that you're moving. This makes it so you can catch up to the ball that's slightly out of reach, or an advanced tactic is to use it offensively and quickly reposition yourself to hit a better angle. The next ability is the Knight ability, Power Swing. This empowers your next swing to be really powerful and sends the ball flying. I made this ring animation as well to show that you're empowered that I think looks pretty good. This ability is kind of overpowered, but it's fun, so I just left it how it is. The last ability is the Chef's ability, which is Palette Cleanser. This instantly resets your swing cooldown, kind of like an animation cancel in fighting games. You can use this defensively if you happen to accidentally swing too early, or in an offensive way to set yourself up more quickly. Honestly, this ability is kind of underpowered, but I just left it how it is. I also made these smoke particles that appear when you use the ability. With all that finished, all I had to do was add some sound effects. I told myself last time that I shouldn't leave all the sound effects until the end, but I didn't listen to my own advice. I spent almost all of Saturday night putting these together. Things like an announcer voice. Almost tennis! Victory! Which is just my own voice if you can't tell. Racket swinging and hitting sounds. Ability sounds. And, of course, a banging soundtrack. Tennis! Now, after all that, the game was finally finished on Saturday night. If you want to check it out, it's available for free in the itch.io link in the description. Subscribe if you liked the video. I have a lot more games and videos planned for when I come back from my vacation. If you want to see the source code, it's available on my Patreon. See you next time.